I wanted people to hear about the story of how you basically built Lionsgate from the ground up. Like a lot of people, um, I feel like my career actually started in middle school when I kind of really came into my love of movies. So everybody on this call, I'm sure, started started loving movies at a very young age. It's a, it's kind of a lifelong obsession for for many. So when I was in middle school, my best friend and I, we would our our parents would drop us off and pick us up at the movies. We'd go back to one of our houses. We would write our movie reviews, put them in our notebooks, sock them away till next time. Thankfully, there was no internet back then. So there was, we didn't store them online anywhere, so I can't be humiliated by any of them right now. <laughs> um, then my, but my career kind of really started in college. Um, I was a, a, a political activist. We started our own uh, left-wing third party uh, when I was a, in school at Penn State. And to raise money for, for our, our causes, uh, we showed movies on campus. I would set up the 16 millimeter projectors and we would show Revenge of the Nerds and Bachelor Party and movies like that. And, we would fund all of our all of our nonprofit left wing groups. Um, so, so learning. So, until that point, like most people, I never thought about how movies got into theaters. Um, I didn't know how to make one, but at least I could kind of think about that. I didn't know how they were marketed. I don't know how they were distributed. But through the non theatrical end of the film business, which encompasses college campuses, I got introduced to a couple of theatrical distribution people. And so, kind of on a lark, I packed up my car, drove cross country from Pennsylvania to, to San Francisco, and got a job, um, thankfully, right away off the street with Columbia Pictures in a branch distribution office. And look, it's, it's a story of, of hard work and luck. Um, I was lucky that there was a job opening right away. Um, I was fortunate that everybody in the office was happy to let me do their jobs for them. And so I was the first one in the office and the last one to leave. And if somebody didn't want to do something, I did it. And, and so I rose through the ranks at Columbia. I went from an assistant cashier to a senior sales manager in a couple of, in a couple of years. Um, and then, uh, then I, I got called by Hemdale. Uh, it was kind of a misdirection when, uh, when Hemdale called me. And so most of you probably haven't heard of Hemdale, but they made some amazing films in the 80s. So I hadn't worked with them, but this was a group that made the original Terminator, The Falcon and the Snowman, Hoosiers, Salvador, Platoon. Wow. And then when I was, it was amazing. And then when I was at Columbia, we distributed a movie Hemdale made called The Last Emperor. So here are these guys who I never heard of, but they produced and financed back-to-back -back Best Picture winners between Platoon and The Last Emperor. They were tired of getting ripped off by studios, which I can relate to. And so uh, they decided to start up their own theatrical marketing and distribution uh, team and they called me to, to help do that uh, for them. Unfortunately, from the time I joined them and I stayed there six years, I don't think they made another film that anybody on this call has ever heard of, much less seen. So that was six years of agony. Um, and the company actually went bankrupt three times. Um, <laughs> but, but there's a lesson to be learned here in that um, at like the five year and 11 month mark, um, companies going down the tubes again, we're, we come in every day not knowing if the, if the padlocks are going to be on the door, if the bankruptcy court's going to take over again. And a fellow came to my office from a small uh, Canadian distribution company called CFP, Cinepix Film Properties. And he came to my office looking to buy independent films for Canadian distribution. And I said, get the fuck out of here. Um, this company's going down the drain. Like, you should know that before you walk in. I don't want to take your deposits. If you give me any money, you're never gonna, you're gonna lose the deposits to the bankruptcy court and you're never gonna get the movie. So do yourself a favor, you seem like a nice guy, get out of here. Um, so he left and we exchanged numbers. And a year later, um, I was unemployed. Company had gone bankrupt. I was unemployed, I, had, I was completely broke. I was reading the trades for free at the newsstand um, by the good grace of the, of the guy who managed it. And I saw in Variety that CFP had since opened a US distribution office and that their general sales manager had left. And so I called up this fellow, Jeff Sackman, who I'd seen a year before in my office, and I said, I see your distribution guy left. If you need me to do it freelance out of LA, I can do that for you. And he asked me to move to New York, and I said, you're not gonna pay me enough to move to New York, so no. And uh, ultimately, he said, okay, you can do it in LA, do it out of your apartment. I said, okay. And uh, a couple of months later, I called him and I said, 
you know, this is great, but I got to get out of the apartment. Let me get an office. We're building something great. I know this is going to be amazing. And he said, okay. And I got a small office. And a year later, we changed our name to Lionsgate. And that's how Lionsgate in Los Angeles was born. The lesson, which repeated itself a few years later, was essentially you can be a nice person and win. You don't have to be an asshole. Um, by virtue of telling this guy, Jeff Sackman, who I'm still friendly with today, uh, by telling Jeff not to let me take his money, that meant something. It was the right thing to do, and it meant something. And so a year later, when he had a job opening, he knew I was somebody he could trust because when I didn't have any reason to, I did right by him. So the worst job of my life turned into the best job of my life. Um, we then, uh, you know, we spent a couple of years without, without two nickels to rub together. And we just started, we just built the company brick by brick. We did low budget, no budget art house films. We would pick them up for $50,000 at Sundance or Toronto. If we could gross a million or two at the box office without spending much money, we would turn that into a win. And then lo and behold, a couple of years later, we had, uh, gosh, we had uh, um, Buffalo 66 uh, with Vincent Gallo. And then the next year we had Gods and Monsters and Affliction. Uh, both movies went on to win Academy Awards. And the next year we had the Red Violin and that won an Oscar. And I think it was the year after that. Um, um, after and there's Monsters Ball. Then we decided we wanted to try and do wide release movies, but we still didn't have any money. And so it's like, what kind of movies can we do for wide theatrical release, but not spend a lot of money? And that was horror. Um, you can make horror movies cheaply. You don't have to spend as much marketing them. And so we did Rob Zombie's first couple of movies and we did Eli Roth's first couple of movies. Um, and then we just grew and we grew and uh, into the present Lionsgate and that it turned into um, Monster's Ball and Girl with the Pearl Earring and The Cooler. Um, mm -hmm great movies. And then in the summer of 04 became the 10 months I called the 10 months that shook the world. Um, all of a sudden, Little Lionsgate, as we had been emerging, and it's in the period of 10 months, we had Fahrenheit 9-11, highest grossing dock in history. Then we had Open Water, if you remember about the scuba diving couple that gets left behind by the tour boat, which Love a husband and wife, great movie, husband and wife team made it for like 20 grand over the course of six months on weekends. Um, so it was Fahrenheit in July. It was open water in August. The first Saw movie came out in October of that year. Wow. The first Tyler Perry movie came out in February of 05. And then Crash came out in May of 05. So it went from biggest stock of all time, ridiculously uh, profitable open water. Um, it grossed 30 something million, but it performed on the ancillaries like it grossed 100 million. Then we had at the time, then we had Saw, which turned into the biggest horror franchise of all time for a while. Oh then we had Tyler, which turned into his own franchise. And then we had our first best picture winner with Crash. And so that, and that's what led to Lionsgate. Like all good things, it was time to come to an end. I left um, in 09. I took an offer I really couldn't refuse from, uh, from Harvey Weinstein and his brother, Bob. Um, and so um, in, uh, in 09, um, as soon as I got to the Weinstein Company, I realized it was a terrible mistake. Um, I, I had worked with them before. I knew that they were you know, not good people, but I had no idea how insane and how crazy it would be. And so I tried to leave after a couple of weeks. They wouldn't let me. Ultimately, after a few months, I started negotiating my exit, um, and I ended up having to buy myself out. So I ended up paying $75,000 to buy myself out of my contract with the Weinsteins. But in the meantime, um, I had befriended the COO of the company. His name was Lee Solomon. We were, in, uh, we were in Berlin my first week, and Harvey stopped talking to Lee and never spoke to him again my entire time at the company. And so I was nice to Lee. Nobody else would talk to him. We ended up leaving at the same time. And a year later, Lee and I, Lee goes to uh, Apollo Investments, which is one of the biggest hedge funds in the world who happened to own AMC at the time. I just, I quit, bought myself out of my contract. A year later, Lee calls me and says, hey, have you heard that AMC and Regal are starting a new film company? And I said, I heard the rumor, but I don't really believe it. And he said, it's really happening. Do you want to run it? And, uh, and I said, sure. And that's what, that's what turned into Open Road. And so the two worst jobs of my life, Hemdale and the Weinstein Company, turned into the two best jobs in my life, my yeah. career, Lionsgate, 
and open road. And that's because when I had the opportunity, I just did the right thing. Like I'm, you know, I'm a reasonably bright guy. I work hard, but when when it mattered, I I did the right thing. And I and I tell that story because it's so important. Because this town is so full of assholes, and so many people think and they try and make you think that nice guys finish last. And if you know, and you better you know you better dick over somebody else before they dick over you. And there are a lot of terrible people in this business, but you don't have to be one to succeed.